you wake up, you watch the sunrise. You watch the cows graze across the pasture. You know, you watch your boy run up to you and say, good morning, daddy. It's just the things that you take for granted every day. You think, I'm gonna get up in the morning and I'm gonna be able to see. And now here's a guy that has had that taken away from him. When I first started noticing the blurriness, me and Billy, we were shooting bows one time. He was wondering why he wasn't shooting as good as what he normally does, because normally Vince was a really good shot. I said, is there a spot on that, you know, target? And he's like, yeah. You know, and I knew then that something was going wrong. It just kept progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And come deer season, I mean, he's having a hard time seeing his sights on his bow. Found a neuro ophthalmologist and he was able to tell me what was going on right off the bat. It was kind of the, the moment that it clicked saying, you know, he's not gonna be able to see again. It took the life out of him. I was lost. I mean, you know, because everything that I've known and done, you know, is it wasn't really there anymore. You know, and I knew I was going to miss out on watching my kids play their sports and graduations and get married. We can say, you know, I understand where you're at. You know, I've I've been there. We haven't. He physically couldn't do his job. How's he gonna survive? I mean, he's got a wife and five kids. I mean, it's like the, the rug is ripped out from under him. What meant a lot to Vince was getting out there, spending time in the woods. I mean, that's where his heart was. I kept asking myself, you know, what can I do to get him back out there? You know, I missed that lot, a lot. I mean, I wished I could bow hunt, you know, one time, one last time. So I'm thinking, how am I gonna get him to shoot a bow again? There's so much movement. There's correct form, there's anchor point. Right a little more, right there. Oh, man, just a little low. When you can't see, you kind of lose that memory. Hit it? Nope. No. Hit the hay bale. I was like, there's gotta be a way that we can do it. So I said, well, what about a crossbow? The day we brought it home, we set up out here, and at 40 yards, it was dead on. Boom! I like the mornings because, you know, it's quiet. It was just kind of like a sense of calm, but he freaking farts in the damn blind. I'll save it all week for you. That's <laughs> natural cover scent. Mm-hmm. He's all the time telling me, you know, man, I, I feel sorry that you're giving up your hunting opportunities, you know, to help me. If I look at it, it's adding to my life. Spending that time with Vince, seeing the excitement on his face.
You got him, buddy. <laughs> the deer all over. You know, I thought it was kind of weird, but that's how he sees that deer. You can do it. You can change your situation. It makes me more appreciative of not taking so much for granted. <laughs> that deer looked like he'd been through war. <laughs> yeah, I could have gave up, you know, many, many times, but, you know, what kind of example am I setting for my kids? When I seen this picture, I was like, I'm not going to let my disability stop me from doing things I enjoy in life. We try to be men and we try not to show emotions, but I respect him a lot. How he's overcome a lot of that. How strong he's been through a lot of it. In general, what does he mean to you as a friend? There's nothing I wouldn't really do for him. I mean, he's just, you know, that good of a guy. You know, you go through life only having very few true friends, you know, and that's what, uh, you know, Billy is to me. There's a lot of people that were just laid down and gave up. For him to come back and have that spirit that he has, that is absolutely remarkable. <laughs> 